Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode seven, we think, of the Almost Daily Show, aka the Relationship Marketing Experience with myself, Chandler. And you got Dave Picardi coming at you. We're super pumped about today's episode. Dave's super strong. If you're watching the video version of this, you can see his muscles. It'll be back. Huge. That was a terrible Arnold impression I just did. Yeah, it was pretty bad, but that's okay. I need to work on my, uh, my accent. <laughs> a little practice. Yeah, I can get there. I'll yeah. take some voice lessons. That's singing, all. maybe. I want to take singing lessons because I'm tone deaf, so it couldn't hurt. That's true. I've, I've been called the songbird of my generation, but I yes. think I can improve. Yep. You're not the songbird of your generation. <laughs> you should hear me singing in the shower. It's not good. <laughs> oh, man. It sounds great in my head. It's, it's like that for me. Yeah. And that's so, what matters, how you feel. You really, how you feel. We talked about that yesterday, making yeah. people feel good. Yeah. Yeah. Nice is nice. That's right. That's right. So uh, I think we got a good one queued up for today for everybody. Yeah, we were on a meeting the other day and we had a really good question from someone who was maybe a little bit duped into a, a marketing platform. And the question was, hey guys, so I purchased this really expensive lead nurture system that sends people emails, but I'm not getting any leads from it. And it was promised to be the thing that's going to make my business take the next level and bring in all these new clients and stuff. And so we wanted to talk about that today. It's, um, yeah, I think it's the biggest problem going on right now is, is you know, everybody everybody wants leads in their business and so you know they'll they'll if something's packaged shiny and it looks good and the sales guy was good uh, they're purchasing it and they're putting it on a short leash saying you know i'll give it three months and if it doesn't work i'll pull the plug unfortunately most people pull they pull the plug on that because it it's they're buying the wrong uh tool for the job is really what's going on yeah exactly and so when we look at this from the point of our friend who purchased this and wasn't getting any results it's uh, due to the, the simple fact that he was sold a system that's intended to nurture clients who are already in his system. It's not a system that's intended to nurture clients who are outside the system. And when you look at the foundational aspects of an email marketing system, all, what it is is it takes care of people who are in your funnel, but you have to actually get them there. And even right. if it's attached to like a simple website, it's still not going to pull people into that because people aren't just going directly to your website anymore. So that's the, uh, you know, like I don't want to downplay the importance of a nurture system because it's actually an integral part of your long-term business plan. You yeah, it's incredibly it. important. You need it, right? And so it, most people, because they're not, they don't play the game, overall game right, and they don't budget correctly, and they don't put their allotted money where it needs to be, and consistently do it over a long period of time, it feels like something that is something you don't need in your business, but you do need it. Yeah, just understand that um, it's nurturing, not what you're considering marketing. It's not going out and getting new clients. Yeah, exactly. And that's the key point there is nurturing. It's, it's basically the final phases of building the relationship. And so we always talk about how important it is to build a relationship. And you're building it on your social and your branding efforts and everything you're doing to pull people into your system. But now once you get people into your lead nurture system, this is when you're able to maintain contact with them through newsletters, content digest, basic check-ins. You can even ping yourself to remind yourself to check in with people. And th that's the key piece that any email and lead nurture system does is it, it continues to nurture the clients once they're, already, once they're in your funnel. And that's a, it's a critical aspect, but it's not the lead generation aspect. Right. I think that's what people get confused and that's what we're always fielding the questions because right, like we have a lead nurture system. Uh, we use one that's a professional grade, right? And everyone gets into Infusionsoft and it's so complex, but it, it's complex because it's an actual professional tool and it's not, uh, it's not set up for laymen to just get in there and do their thing with, right? You have to actually get educated and, you know, and whatever, right? Like it is what it is, but depending on your business, you know, the more professional the tool you have, the more, I guess, the more powerful it becomes long term, right? So, you know, it's not the next three months that matters. It's, it's the next year, three years, five years, 10 years. The longer you have a professional grade product, the better you can build it around your culture, your business to have it work for you. And that's why I think what else doesn't happen 
is um, people, they, they get these lead nurture systems. They do a pretty expensive onboarding process. It's kind of good for their business. They launch it, uh, but it's not something that's always changing and getting better and, and really tying into their programs. Uh, and I think that's what we've done is, you know, we go in and look at it totally different, right? Like, yeah. so talk about that. Our approach is different and the lead nurture system supports the approach, not vice versa. Yeah, that's a key point. It, your, your lead nurture system can't be like this packaged in a box thing that's tested and proven by people. It has to be something that's been, you have to have an interview process with the person you're working with. We have to understand the business. We have to understand the culture in the business. We have to understand why they do the things they do, what their processes are, and what their reactions and responses are to situations. And then we can build out something that's like that actually speaks to their people, actually speaks to their brand, actually speaks about them. And it's something they're proud of. It's not something that they look at and they're like, oh, you have to change all this stuff because it doesn't speak from the way we speak. Right. And we found that, you know, we ended up in the, the lead nurture business by accident. It wasn't even really our, what we set out to do, you know, and, and we started, um, we started building this stuff and getting in and interacting with it because, so we, we were good on the marketing side and we, we knew we needed this tool, uh, but we found was it was all too pre prepackaged. And so our, some of our first clients would be like, well, I, you know, we don't speak this way. So this system's not good for us as opposed to what we actually learned over time was uh, everybody speaks differently. And so it always has to be crafted around an individual person and you constantly have to go back and reassess it. You can't just launch something and say, there you go, you, you know, it's good. You wanna go back in and say, you know what? Like, I think we should improve on this, right? I think we should cut a new, a fresh video to go in this series. Uh, it, and that's where you need, you know, the extra professional help to really always engage with the product and always make it better and make it fit your community and marketing efforts um, and work for you. Yeah, exactly. You always need a professional to build out things that you want to actually be professional. You don't go into your, to your dentist and say, Hey, I just worked on my own teeth. Can you just check them out and see if I did a good job? So yeah. I, made a, I made a mistake. Yeah. Your dentist would laugh at you. <laughs> you probably significantly hurt yourself. <laughs> <laughs> the same thing here. You have to find someone who's done this before and who understands how to bridge the gap between your business and culture and the foundations of your sales and marketing funnel. And then someone who can come out and actually speak the way you speak because they understand you after a thorough interview process. Right. And something that we're always doing is, is, you know, we're out producing content and we actually, you know, we're tracking what's working and what's not working with marketing uh, and making those adjustments. Well, as those adjustments happen, there might need to be adjustments made in copy and processes with your nurture system to match what's going on in the environment and the marketing. So you always want to make sure that it's all tied together. They work together. Right? So think of it as what's going on in the house to make sure that everybody knows what's going on and contacts being made and people are reminded of certain things. And, um, you know, and, and that, you know, the, 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 almost like the house cleaning and organization that's going on. Uh, but then you need to get people to the front door and out into that real world. So there's two, there's two distinct sides of what's going on in your marketing. Um, but to bring it kind of back home, we, f we find is people call us because they have these really expensive nurture systems and they're not, they, you know, they, they don't know what they're for is what we're finding, right? They yeah. think they're for something that they're not. That's a good point. You have to I think the other responsibility of the marketing person who builds this out is <clears throat> teaching people how to use it, training their staff on how to use it and keeping in contact with them. You can't just leave it and forget it. And because if you do, they're not going to use it. They're not going to get buy-in from their staff. So you really have to get in the boat with people and say like, this is how we're going to organize this. This is how your staff uses this. Let's, let's keep on meeting. Let's do like monthly meetings and make sure you're actually continuing to use this. Because otherwise, yeah, it turns into this thing where it's just a cool tool, but they don't actually use it because there's no buy-in. And the owner doesn't want to just do it all themselves because it's a huge workload. Right. And people don't put enough emphasis on it, like, or even understanding the importance of it. You know, like, we always talk about it, and Chandler pushes it a lot. Like, you got to do the work, right? Like, are you going to sneeze? Is it coming? Bless you. It's coming. Bless oh, you. I lost it. Yeah, I, totally I stopped. Lost that it. was me. I stopped that. You, you blessed so, it out of me. So... 
you know, if, if you open up a business and you have a service that you're an expert at that you're selling, not only do you have to be an expert at that service that you're selling, if you want to survive business, you have to be an expert at the business as well. And marketing is a piece of that business. And so, you know, lots of people can't afford things or they, you know, they didn't really budget for them, but you really need to be putting money into marketing if you want to survive long-term in business. And either you work with companies, right? And this is what, like, as we're talking about people that have lead nurture companies they're working with, it's, you got to work with someone and if you're not working with that someone you need to become an expert yourself, right? You can't have a, a crappy marketing lead nurture product and expect it to do wonders for your business. Yeah, exactly. There is no end all be all. It has to be, and I, I always look at it as marketing should be a sustainable thing that you're always doing. It's not, it shouldn't be a platform to where you just pump a bunch of money into it when you get a bunch of money in your business and then shut it off when you run out of money. Right. It needs to be organized over 12 months and budgeted over those 12 months. So it's already accounted for. And now you have a consistent, predictable flow of business versus like flash floods of leads and business and then nothing. So you don't, you want, you want to get out of that scarcity mindset you get when you have like your slow season. But if you always have your marketing budgeted and organized and set up in a way to where it's already planned for, it's already happening. The money's already there. You're going to be a lot better off. You're going to have a sustainable and predictable flow of business versus just hoping and praying for business. Right. Yeah, actually, I'm noticing so the board behind me, I, I think it sees it backwards anyways, but right in the middle of it is lead nurture and nurturing system, right? <laughs> and everything around it is all the stuff that's happening around the business, but the nurture system actually connects the whole thing. You know, yeah. but, you know but a part of that is marketing, but marketing is not the nurture system. Marketing is marketing. There's exactly. a whole other strategy for that. Everything builds into your nurture system, but your nurture system doesn't actually push anybody into it itself. So That's it's a right. two-step right. two system. Actually, it's probably like a 475-step system, but to simplify it, <laughs> two-step system and a nurture system without the support behind it to pull people in will fail. All mm -hmm. the time. So, so yeah, so anyone that's always shooting us messages or, or asking questions, that's why we jumped on this thing to really clarify the difference between the two. Yeah, good times. Great episode. Always a great episode. I just like hanging out with you. So yeah. we'll just keep doing these so I can see you almost every day. It's true. I just like looking at you. I think it's because we're so handsome. We are. Yeah. But easy like being us. A handsome duo. <laughs> I love it. All right, guys. So thanks for um, hanging with us on episode seven of the Almost Daily Show. See ya. It's See been ya. fun. <laughs>